room and called me and told me my son was in the hospital critical. No, yeah, um, ever called me and told me my son was dead. And no, I, I, I had a very similar experience. And I don't think you that's know, my, fair. I'm his mother. I should have the right to know what happened. It's, it's, there's certain things about it that are just, there's, there's no other way to explain it other than just cold and barbaric. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, part of, it, 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 it's part of not just changing like the sentencing reform and things like that, but trying to change the culture of the way things operate, the way people interact and feel and deal with things. And yeah. there are institutions where that is already well in, underway. You know, where there are just far and away, you know, different. It's not just like, you know, yeah, it's still a prison and stuff like that. But, you know, you're, you know, the, the guards talk to you by your first name. You know, they, they, they get, it's, they're, it, it's slowly happening, but the system is, it is moving in the right direction. As long as people, people keep pushing. You know, Believe long, me, I'm getting to off. push to help people's kids that don't need to be in there, that's in there, but the ones that are out yeah. here in the world that should be in there, uh, I don't understand, like I told Amy, because there's people out here raping and killing and murdering children, and they only do six months or two years, and they're right back out doing the same thing they did before, and... I don't think that is right for the ones that didn't do on purpose or was an accident, gets life in prison. I mean, they need to look what they're doing. I mean, come on, there's people out here that need to be life in prison, the ones that don't need to be life in prison. I, I believe the best course of action, and I am not an attorney. I am not an attorney. I know, attorney. I understand Right, that. we're advocates. And we are advocates. We can get in trouble for acting as attorneys. We're guiding families of the incarcerated the best that mm -hmm. we can. Because you guys are chained to these crimes, these situations, and you need support. And there's no one to support yeah. you. We've been in prison, so we can help you. Yeah. And, well, so I, I need all the support I get from you, Amy, and everybody else, because I can't deal with this. So, it's, it there, there, so much. there's a way to do anything, and it may not be the, it may not be the clearest way when you start. There may be a lot of uh, trial and error along the way, it certainly was in my case. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I wasted a lot of years on things I thought would work, and, you know, which didn't, and, you, you just kind of have to weigh each individual thing. And I think it's a matter of this one, this particular case, once again, not attorney, but in my opinion, it's not so much pushing for innocence as it is pushing for an actual definition of what happened. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, nobody, nobody, you will never find a court, you will never find an attorney, you will never find a judge who is going to back straight out innocent. That's right. When, there, when there's this much loss involved. There's just, they will be run out of town and hung from the nearest tree. There's just no judge, there, nobody will support that. You know, it's, it's a, but it, it, it's being accountable to what is actually appropriate to the involvement in the, this particular tragedy. It's, people get hurt in things like this because we make poor decisions and that's why you have the. That's why you have differentiated words. It's involuntary, you know. And let's value. And once again, not attorney, but it's one of those. Let's use this as an example, like involuntary manslaughter. Yeah. Or, nobody. The person. Somebody. People died. Involuntary manslaughter. The person who brought this about didn't go into it intending to do that. They did not seek to hurt somebody. They did not. You know, did not start out and make a plan and say, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do harm to these individuals." It was poor decisions that led to a particular tragedy. The difference is, is the involuntary variety of sentencing has a max sentence of ten years. You know, if they feel that you are the absolute worst variety of person who could have possibly done this, you know. There, you know, it, it, under the under the, the new uh, under the new guidelines, you know, the, uh, which he falls under because he, uh, because of his number, he he came in after he came in after the new law. 
Yeah, it was 2000, Under, June 2000 when he went in. Yep, he's, he's new law. Which means, you know, it, it's one of those things where you're not trying to prove his innocence, you're trying to define specifically what his, what his variety of guilt is. And the mom feels because guilty because she bought the bottle rockets. He was 16, now he's been in prison as an adult. If he dies... Or if she dies, she's crying her head off, Justin, that he's going to be all by himself. No one writes him. She's the only one that visits him. So you're saying, because he's under new law, if he takes accountability because something, people did die. It was an accident. It was a firework on 4th of July accident. But there might be a way, if we go about it in an accountability way, that we could deal with this. I believe, you know, if you stand back and you look at this, because you have to look at this that the, from the direction that... Uh, society from the courts, you have to look at this, you know, you have to approach this as if you're them. What could you possibly, what, you know, what possible course of action could you possibly support where you, it is not career suicide, where it is not, you know, it is not unconscionable. And one of the things is, is my opinion is accurate accountability. Yes. In the sense that you know, you're, you're stating, you know, he's coming up, he's not saying, I am completely innocent. Every single person across the board will ignore you. Not because that, that, that isn't the case, it's because nobody, because, you know, children lost their lives. Nobody is going to support absolute innocence outright. The society as a whole will reject it. And you'll, you'll, you'll never get any traction. And his prison yeah, record, his conduct I, record is very important, right? And he has a good prison conduct record, right, Laura? Those things come into account when you're taught, when you're when you're looking at your credibility, you know, and it's one of those things where you know when a person comes up and you have this horrible prison record where you have you've done all these things, you know, and they're, they're, they're going to look at that. They're going to want to know what kind of person you are. Believe me, they do their homework. One has never been in trouble since he's been in there. Never gotten a fight. Or when he first went in there, they beat him up, like I said, because what they had on the news and on yeah. the newspaper. That's what that happened, and he didn't fight back. Because, you yeah. know, he was too little, like I said. But he's never been in trouble since then. He ain't never been, yeah. you know, caused him any alien. He never yeah. gives him any spits or fuss. He, he listens to him. He goes to his room. All he does is read. He goes to the library, reads. He goes in, and does yeah. things around there. I mean... Yeah. He's got a job, things. like Don't. he told me. He's been there cleaning, you know, recycling stuff, and he he's doing what he's supposed to do to keep out of everybody's road, and he don't cause no yeah. problem. Get he's him. a good kid. He's never been in trouble when he was out. Get him in front of somebody. That's the thing. And the way here's the thing: you got to get him in front of somebody, and it's got to be one of those things where they need to see. You know, he need if you can get him in front of somebody where it's not you. you don't attack the courts. Don't attack the sentencing. Right. Don't attack them. If you put them in a defensive position, they're going to defend their position. So, in other words, the courthouse and see if I could talk to a judge or something. Steve, you know, Steve, I'm talking. Steve, I'm talking about the, you know, I'll do that. Amy knows far more people than I do on this. Mm -hmm. I'm actually just bringing, I'm bringing personal experience of what I've seen work and what I've seen not work over the years. Okay. And. You know, the things that I've seen work is when you don't make them defend themselves, give them a way out. Give them a way to still win. Yes. All right? That's the thing is when it's all said and done, that you, the people who are going to stick their necks out on things like this are the ones who are not opening themselves up to attack afterwards. Right. You're, you know, that make it easy for them to agree with you. But Justin is your beacon of hope because he was sentenced as a juvenile like your son was to prison for a very long time i don't want to go into your case justin to put you on any kind of weird situation but he is your beacon of light your beacon of hope because basically you're the only one under this governor Kasich thing that has had this opportunity right that's the thing is um i you know it, it, the day came where i was able to stand in front of them you know and speak and they, they looked at the things i've done over the years they looked at what i accomplished how did rehabilitation apply to me, to this kid who grew up in prison, who knew nothing other than what prison taught him? And when it came down to it, is I didn't, I never said I didn't do it. I never, you know, I didn't go up in front of them and say, I'm innocent of this. 
You know, once I met I, him, but he played, once I met on to the Texas, that he admitted he was playing with bottle rockets, and he admitted that. So that's when they, when he admitted that, that's when they put him in prison. I mean, he didn't lie that he didn't buy him, and he didn't admit that. I mean, he admit that he was playing with him, but he didn't do anything on purpose. He was just a child playing with bottle rockets, and he didn't ask, him, you know, that go inside the house. I mean, he admit that he was bottle rockets, and he was playing with him. Well, he, I mean, he didn't lie about it. Oh, that's the thing is, follow, follow through on that in the sense that... I mean, he missed things, everything he done. He never lied. Yeah. My son don't lie. He don't have to lie. I taught my kids. I raised all three of my boys by myself. I did housekeeping work. I struggled, struggled, paid my rent, my bills. I did everything I could to be a perfect mom and raise all three boys without nothing. And I always taught my kids with manners, yes ma'am, no ma'am, you know, and they still do that. Even my son in prison says yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am to me on the phone, everything. So I try to do the best I could being yeah. oh, low income and I couldn't afford no lawyer to help me, but you know, and it's just like, the, the it just path, like killed me. The best path to victory here. Yeah. You know, I wish I was rich, you know? And I, I'm not. I, didn't I wish I was at that time. Believe me, yeah. got my baby. Trust but me, I, uh, it's too late to yeah. say it, but I was poor, and I'm. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm proud. I mean, I I struggled all my life since I was 16. I took care of my. Um, I was, you know, I had my son, my first one, the 16th. I never give up my kids. I kept all three of my kids. My first son, I was not supposed to have because I was molested. I was raped, but I kept them. I but he says, kids. let him tell you your first step to the road of victory, Laura. And I'm yep. still struggling. I still have my oldest son live with me, taking care of me, because I think I have a tumor on my brain, they think. And my other son coming up because I tried to kill myself because of all the stress over my son. And they're still good kids, and they help me. And there's parents out there don't care about their children. Let them run the streets, sell drugs, kill people, shoot him. I mean, my kids, I know where my kids are. They're marrying up kids their own, you know? Okay, well, I don't let's, understand. Let's just focus on what is her first step to victory, and I'm going to help her, but what would you say her okay. first step? Well, first thing, yeah. first, can, go first ahead. thing you got to do, uh, the first thing you got to do is you, gotta, you have to abandon overturning the step. You have to abandon innocence outright. Okay. There, there, there's just, you're, you're, there, there, there is no positive outcome in that. Nobody... Nobody will support it. Too much, too much was lost. Regardless of what the actual circumstances were, nobody can support that because too much loss was suffered. It's you want you want to go for you know you want to push for things like resentencing. You want to push things for okay. you know re. Well, maybe I probably need your help doing some of this because I don't understand all of this. I don't know because you know. Okay. I just want to listen.